It's, this is such a big issue for so many ambitious women. We have many brilliant women who are well-educated and hardworking, and we all get, almost everybody, gets in this situation where we're in this conflict of being a mother and having a career. And I really, really hope that in the next century, or even better, in the next decade, could we create better conditions for women? I don't know, I don't mm. have the answer, but I think it's crap that we have to deal with this. And I'm so grateful that you are sharing your story because I know there's a lot of women out there who wants to get inspiration, who needs to hear from other women which kind of struggles they've been through, how they've been handling, and too few women are telling about these things. And also we have these Instagram times where all mothers should be baking themselves, they should be, you know, I made a lot of wrong decisions and I have to live with them, but I did and I'm not ashamed of it because you don't know until you're in it. And my first child will probably, when she grows up, say, why was I the guinea pig who had to take all these, the, the consequences of your bad decisions? I did the best I could. And that's really, I did the best I could. I didn't know better. Mm. I knew better later. Mm. And that doesn't make it the wrong decision for everyone else, but it was for me. So um, we also, we, we have to acknowledge that we make mistakes. The most th important thing is that we learn from them. And we forgive. Yes. Let's forgive ourselves. Yes, exactly. Don't try to be perfect. We can't. No. no. Louis became the managing director when she was very young. She was only 27. And what Louis didn't know at the time was that she was pregnant. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I was actually at the big welcoming party. I was pregnant and I didn't realize until a week after. Um, so suddenly I was faced with some quite serious considerations about what to do because it was not planned this way. And um, one of the most difficult calls I've actually ever made was calling all my bosses from my new uh, company and saying after two weeks and we had a great party, thank you, it was great to see you guys. By the way, I'm pregnant and I will be leaving you uh, to go on maternity leave in nine months or eight months. Um, that was a very difficult call to make. How did they respond to it? They were actually quite nice. They were quite nice. They said congratulations. Um, <laughs> and then it was sort of quiet because what do we do now? Um, and the London-based office isn't that used to having female managing directors becoming pregnant. Because <laughs> usually you're, you're older when you're, when you're a managing director. And usually you're also a man. Yes. True. Yeah. So we had to sort of figure it out along the way. And I just said, I don't know really what, how to do this. And then I promised to get back to them. And that's when I had to start thinking quite hard about what to do. Um, I was, as you said, I was pretty young and I was just on the verge of beginning this career. So my immediate thought was, right, I do six months. In Denmark, it's quite normal to do a full year but I was going to do six months. My husband could do the other six months. I decided to stay very much in touch with work. I um, was on my email. I was on my phone and everything. So that's what I told England and they were quite pleased with that. And the day came, I gave birth. Everything was great. I stayed at home, but I was on my phone, I was on the emails. At night, I remember nursing in front of the computer, writing these emails. I came in for all the reporting meetings with my kid on the, on the arm. And um, after six months, I was still nursing quite heavily, but I went back to work. I had sore boobs from all the milk, but I was at work, so I couldn't nurse my baby. And I came home in the afternoon and I did what I could. It was, it was uh, very, very intense. Um, yes. So how did you reflect on that? What were your thoughts of um, that experience with your first child? When I was in it and when I came back, I was so absorbed by the thought of proving that this could happen like I had planned, 
So I didn't really reflect. I actually really just proved all with all my effort. I proved that I could do this. I then became pregnant again within a year after. And uh, by now I should have learned that you can get pregnant, how it happens, but it happens. You hadn't learned that. And <laughs> yes, uh, we'll skip that. And that really started a process because up until then I had just been so uh, insisting on proving that I could do this in the hardcore way. And make, becoming pregnant again really made me think that I need to do this differently. So this time I took nine months of sabbatical or maternity leave. Uh, and when I came back to work, I did it being there three days a week and being home with my number two kid two days a week. I was still on the email. Uh, I was less on it and I was a bit more annoyed by the fact that I had to be on the email. Um, but I was still present and actually when I got pregnant the second time and had to call my boss in London, he said yet again, oh, it's been so nice to know you. So what did you mean about that? And I said, it's nice to know you too, but what do you mean? And he said, no, it's, it's been such a pleasure. Have a good one. And I said, but I'll be back. I'll be back when I'm done. I just need to be at home with him. And clearly he did not believe it. He said, yeah, okay, we'll see. <laughs> and that sort of triggered me to be more attentive to getting back to work and being more present. So I didn't cut the lines when I went on the maternity leave the second time. Uh, but it was, much, it was much more relaxed and I did stay more in it. But again, I didn't completely feel that I had the full sort of experience basically that motherhood triggers in you and that you feel the need to do. And I became pregnant again a third time. Uh, this time it was planned. It was a super good planned experience. And again, I called the UK office and I said, guys, I'm having a last one. And as a result of that, they said, this time, we really wish you all the best. It has been such a pleasure to know you. <laughs> um, and I said, I will be back, but this time I'm doing it differently. I didn't have my email with me anymore. I put on an auto, re auto reply for the first time. I told everyone that I could be contacted on my phone if there was an emergency. And I took 14 months of leave. And what was quite interesting was that I, I told my staff about this and I said, guys, I'm not going to be on the email. I'm going to be on my phone if there is anything, emergencies, just give me a ring. And the spontaneous reaction from one of my staff members was, finally, finally, you let us do this without trying to prove that you can be here when you're not really here because it just makes things more complicated. And that was just such an eye-opener to me. And this idea that I'm, I, I need to be there, I'm in unvaluable, I need to prove all these things, it's all in my head. It was all me thinking I had to do everything, resulting in the fact that I was not doing anything because I wasn't there 100% for my child and I wasn't there 100% for work. So that was a real eye-opener to me. Mm. And I did came, come back after the third time and all the UK office said, okay, we believe you stay around this time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard work to balance everything. It's, you want to be the perfect mother, you want to be the perfect managing director, you want to be the good, empathetic, present leader for your, manage, for your staff. And, and all of that is a daily, it's not a battle, but it's a daily challenge, at least I find, to, to make it all end up in a good way and without being too, much, too stressed. 
Do you have any kind of overall reflections you want to pass on? Like, if somebody's watching here and... Well, if they should be in the rare situation that they are young managing director or in another career job and they're going to be a mom, what are your advices? How, how should one handle having a career, balancing having a demanding career and being a mom at the same time? I know you are a very dedicated mom, as I am myself, you're nursing a lot. Mm. And nursing a child has some kind of physical limitations. You actually, yes. the child needs to be with you. Mm. So I know you've been nursing in meetings as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's so difficult to give advice on this area without sounding like an awful cliche. Um, I, I can try. I think it's um, the most important thing is to feel inside what you truly believe is right for you. And what is right for you is maybe not right for me. And for some people, going back to work really fast with the limitations it, it has in it for your bond, not the bond, not that it makes it less, but you can't nurse if you're at work. For some people, that is actually what feels right. But becoming a mother is the most extreme thing I have ever experienced. Mm. And by extreme, it's loaded with a lot of good things, but it's certainly also loaded with a lot of conflict and uh, tiredness. Yeah, restraints. <laughs> <laughs> and, and complete sort of lack of control, mm. which is very healthy and very good, but also so challenging. But you're faced with some sort of need to look inside and find out who am I, because suddenly you have this responsibility that you've never had before. And you need to find out what you stand up for. Yeah. And I think that would be my best advice. I don't, I don't favor staying at home knitting all the clothes for the babies yourself, nursing them till they're eight or three or two. I don't mind, but I think the most important thing is that you as a mother listen to what you, you feel is relevant and, and important. Because yeah. that's going to give you the best life with the child, with the family. I think that's a very good advice. Also a bit intangible. For some, yes. if they can't feel it themselves. Is. Yes, and, and but you, you can't, can't but I, always. <laughs> I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah. And, and I would say also, maybe um, wait to make decisions until you're in the situation, because what you're going to feel at some point going to change as the baby grows. Yeah. Or and before, like from before you were mother to after you were mother. Actually, I think it's like the... the Thank you so much for sharing. It's really valuable. Thank you. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down so we know what you think about this video. And keep watching. We'll be back.